If you want to take photographs of something special, such as duplicating my granddad George's 6x9 military photograph, or copying and archiving something special like my granddad Harry's old C records, you could just grab a digital camera and get on with it. But for us film nuts, we just like to make things a little bit more complicated and shoot film. And there's a few films that are really fantastic for that. One of them is Adox's CMS 22 film, a very low ISO film, and also Spur Ultra 800 as well, another low ISO film. And these films are ridiculous, and when I say that, I mean that they're just absolutely off the record. These things are ultra high resolution, totally pin sharp and grain free. And if you have a look on Adox's website, this is what they say about their own film. They say CMS 22 achieves grain free enlargements up to two and a half meters diagonally. You what, 500 megapixels out of one frame of 35 mil film? That's totally insane. I don't know how they equate to that, it's all mega stuff, but sounds good to me. And with the films being so slow, they're not ideal for pictorial stuff like street photography, but I should imagine that these films would be ideal if you're doing still life or something, or maybe landscapes or seascapes, anything where nothing's gonna move and you can use a tripod and a cable release, you're gonna get some fantastic looking negatives. Sharp, bags of resolution, maybe 500 mega things. And my friend Neil Legg sent me these films to play with uh, and also the Spur developer. I have shot CMS 22 in the past, but I've used, I think it was D76 or ID11, one of the two, and I just got absolutely crazy contrast. That's why they developed this particular developer and adults have got their Adotech, I think it's called, which is the perfect developer for these sort of films, which can tame the contrast and you can push these films a little bit more in these developers and get nice looking tonality out of your, your images or your prints. So I'll show you guys the setup that I'm shooting and also the development process as well. And then we'll come back in the dark room and I'll show you what this film looks like on some paper. So the idea of putting this parchment paper against the window is I didn't want any sheen going on these shelves. They're quite shiny, so I didn't want this light coming from the window outside and giving any highlights or, or bright sheen on it. I wanted it kind of looking a bit flat and a bit dull because I know this film is packing contrast. In a moment, I'm going to change the scene around and hit these shelves with contrast and see what happens. But for now, I just want to get a nice flat looking um, photograph on the shelves using this paper. And this paper's off-white, it's not bright white. It's the same paper that you get in fish and chip shops or takeaway food shops, but it's really good for this sort of this sort of work. You might think to yourself, use a bright white background, but or just off-white is quite nice. So I'm gonna play around with this shell and see what I can get with it, uh, just different angles, and then change around different shells, and then I'll change the whole scene around and do some different lighting to get some contrast and see what we get out of that film. So I've got the camera set up on the tripod boom and I'm not using any bounce light to come back in this way. I'm just facing the shell towards this window and I've set the camera up, which means I can then look through the viewfinder and move the shell in any way that I want. And the most important thing for me when I'm doing this is to leave a little bit of breathing space around the shell area. I don't want to be so close in that there's, you know, the shell's not breathing really. So a little bit of background will be nice. And I'm just focusing on this part here. And I'm at F5.6, and it's coming back, the meter, at one second with this film. So I'll need a cable release. So I've just checked my light meter, uh, my spot meter, and the background is a little bit brighter than the part that I want on the shell. So I'll give it about a stop difference. That's the first shot taken. One second. And just for shits and giggles, I'm going to take another one at 5.6, which was the metered. See what that looks like. There it goes. So this time I can use a little bit of parchment paper underneath the shell and just raise it a little bit before it was flat. Now I'm going to raise it up so I can get a bit more light and a different composition on the bottom of that shell there. Hopefully that'll stay still. I'll just keep checking the light, make sure it's not changing with my light meter. So living on an island near sea, the shops around the beaches and stuff often sell shells and I'll sometimes pop in and see what they've got. If I see a nice one, I buy them. They're not expensive, only a few quid, maybe a fiver, sometimes a tenner, depending on the condition of the shell. 
but I find that they're really handy. You know, you put them in the bathroom or wherever and they're a bit decorative and when you want to do a bit of photography because the weather's shit outside, you just grab your shells and do some photographs with them. Choose different backgrounds, different lighting setups and stuff and they think, you know, they do look nice. Edward Weston can't have been wrong, can he? Um, so I've got quite a few shells here that I'm going to remain taking photographs of. I won't bore you with showing you me um, setting up the positions, but I think you get the idea of how I've set all this up. So I'm going to take a few more uh, different shots of these shells. I'll show you those uh, images now, and then I'll get on with doing a more contrasty look and see how this film can handle a little bit of bright light and contrast. So that's some of the window shots done. This time I'm going to use this grey background, which is what I use for headshots and portraits in my room. Uh, and also a light stand. I've got to be careful because I've got a kebab skewer on the top of it. And that's just to hold the shell in whichever position I want. And I'm not obviously looking to get the full shell in the shot, otherwise you'll see the light stand in the kebab skewer as well. I'm looking to get parts of the shell. So real close up, not macro, but very close up stuff. So we'll turn the light on. This thing's quite powerful. Hey, there you go. And you can see on the video camera how it kind of going to look. So you can see we've got the dark side of the shell there, dark side of the moon, bit of Pink Floyd, and the shadow in the background. So we can work around this, use the other shells in the same way, and uh, see what interesting photographs we can get with this. So that was the shots on the grey background. I've now changed it around again. I've got the uh, hard light coming down onto the shell back where I was in the first place. I've got a uh, parchment paper diffuser now over the light just to soften it a little bit. And I'm focusing right on here, right on this point at the end. So that's uh, all my shots taken. I think I had a couple left, but I'd done pretty much what I wanted to do. Uh, so I had three different backgrounds, different lighting, uh, flat lighting, high contrast lighting. So we'll see how these come out. I'm gonna go and develop these now. I'll bring you guys along to the development and let you see how I developed this film in that Spur Developer. Um, I've already tried it. And I have used this film before, but not in Spur Developer. So, and I know that it is a fantastic film, albeit <laughs> very low ISO, so if you're gonna go out on the streets and do some street photography of this, you've got to be really wide open on your aperture or a slow shutter, depending on what you want. So, there's the film. Let's go and put this in the developer and see how it comes out. I'll also show you guys how the negatives look, how thin it is. And you'll also notice when I've developed it that there's a very, very thin base as well. Let's go. So this is the developer that Neil sent me, Spur Nanotech UR. And you only get 50 millilitres of this stuff. And the highest dilution is one part to 14. So you'll probably get about maybe six rolls if you're lucky out of this, depending how much developer you put inside your tank. I'm doing this at one part to 24, which means what well, I'll probably only get about four rolls of film out of this developer. So it's quite an expensive way to uh, shoot film. And that's using 300 millilitres inside my tank. So this is 300 millilitres of water. You can see just about covers the top of the reel. I'd rather step on the side of precaution than um, you know get an uneven developed film. So when I get it out and the developer hasn't hit all the film around the edge at the top, I'd rather have that little tiny bit over. And this is the sheet that I've got as well for it. Developing chart for Adox CMS 22. Uh, this is for the spur developer. I'm gonna go to one part to 24, 24 degrees, eight and a half minutes. Inversions once every minute and that'll give me a normal contrast. <laughs> Thank you. 
It does say to use stop bath and not water. So for those of you that are used to using water, I use water a lot for stopping my films. This film, it's recommended to use stop bath. Um, I can only gather that it's so sensitive that the tiniest piece of developer uh, left on the film after you pour it out, when you're using the stop bath, it kills it straight away. That's the only thing I can think of. So once I've developed, I'm gonna stop it and then fix it. Then I'll give it a good wash and we'll see what we get. So I'll now wash the film. Look at the fixer. I don't want to get water in there. Look at the fixer. Look at the colour of it when it's come out. So it needs a lot of washing, this film. Here we go. Oh, we've got something. That's good news. Oh, there's the film now. All done. Fixed nicely. Nice development. And they look pretty sharp as well. Let's get these dry and I'll show you them on the on the scans and we'll have a little look at the grain and the sharpness see what they look like so the negatives are quite curly i can't flatten them down on the light box to show you so i'm having to hold this one and keep it tight in my fingers but you can see how nice the negatives have come out very easily printable um and there's bags of tonality there but look at the detail in that they come out looking really nice and i'll show you the base of the film you'll be surprised look how transparent that is there's I can't see any density on that whatsoever. In fact, if I had a densitometer, maybe a trickle, but I can't see it, it's totally see-through. And you can see how curly the film is. Look, I couldn't flatten it down. I'd have to get these in sleeves, but I'm gonna take these in the dark room now and see if I can make a print on one of them and see what it looks like. One of these shells look on paper. I preferred the last set, which I did with the diffuser and the hard light next to the window. They look really nice, you can see them here. So I'm gonna take these in the dark room see uh, what they look like on paper. And here's one of the negatives that I've scanned in and put into Photoshop. You can see if I'm zooming in, 136% there, still got bags of detail going on. Obviously this is no comparison to an actual enlargement of a print, but even 500%, I've still got detail going in. And the grain is so fine, look, there's no grain on there at all. It's quite amazing. Let's go in the dark room and put this on paper and see how it looks. So this is one negative that I particularly liked, which was the darker shell, right the uh, the uh, front of it. So we put that in the negative carrier. We'll see how this comes out. And it's quite curly, this film. I don't know if that's normal or maybe, I don't know. It's in date. But uh, let's get it in the enlarger and have a look on the baseboard, what it looks like. And there's the negative there on the baseboard. I've got it set uh, for the whole frame to be printed on nine and a half by 12 inch paper. So uh, negative looks nice. You can see the white background here, which is quite dense. And uh, all the detail in the shell, there's bags of detail in it. And the trouble is printing one of these uh, negatives, it's so fine grain, using my focus finder, it's gonna be really hard to try and get uh, a focus on the, on the uh, negative. There's just no grain at all. I, I, <laughs> I'm just going to have to focus it by eye and hope for the best. I'm just going to make a couple of test strips to see what my enlarger times are going to be. A two and a half grade filter. And I've got my aperture set to 5.6 on the enlarger. And I think that's one of the beautiful things about film photography is all the variables that we can use, developers, films. And, uh, you know, if you can really nail yourself down to one film, one developer, one camera, one lens and really master it, you can go a long way with it you know whether this is the sort of film that you would want to master i don't know but maybe for this sort of work that i've been doing um you know um still life stuff or whatever it's quite enjoyable right let's do this test strip you can see all the tests that i've been doing trying to get this right and i think i've managed to nail it the most important part for me was to try and get some density in the background because i didn't want that the same whiteness or the same brightness as the actual paper or the inertia of the paper so uh, i went through all these tests here and i ended up I started off with a two and a half grade filter and i ended up uh, split grading so i ended up going uh, with the contrast zero and a contrast five the contrast zero was going to put some density in that background for me and then the contrast five was just going to boost the contrast 
and the only way I can tell when I was getting density on the paper was to cover the paper with my finger and then after developing and fixing and drying out I'd be able to see the whiteness of the paper because my finger was covering it um, and I started to just get where I needed to be and this is the first print that I've made but I just haven't got the whiteness down the, uh, the background's too light so I'm going to have to go a little bit longer on zero and try and blend that in you can just see the background's coming in I could put a black border around it but I feel like the black border on this print would distract you from the actual shell so I just want to try and now get a bit more density ar around this background but you can see the beautiful tonality in this shell that's why I chose this one the dark colors with the white inside and all the tones I thought it was lovely um, but I just need to try and get a little bit of density on the background itself um, so a little bit longer with a contrast zero filter and I should be able to nail this print so just a little tiny bit longer with the contrast zero and exactly the same little bit of uh, dodging around this area and hit that with contrast five a bit more and I've now got the background in which is nice I don't know how that's coming out in the video um, but other than that man that shell is so sharp I've got a bloody hair on it as well but I'm going to enlarge this and see what we get so I'll just raise the enlarger head as high as it can go like I'm doing a massive print and I'll put a small piece of paper under there and see what the detail looks like <laughs> so that's about as large as I can go what's that probably about 20 inches uh, on the long edge there there's my hand over the shell let's do a small portion of this uh, with uh, five by seven paper and see what it looks like enlarged so I can't really tell when I'm blowing it up on this one um, my larger just seems to slip out of focus a little bit when I'm doing prints this size uh, but <laughs> one thing about this is you start seeing all the imperfections of the negative look at these little tiny marks uh, little dust spots and stuff on it whereas this one you don't see them at all but I'm really happy with this boing 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 so that's the first time that I've used these sort of films in the specialized associated developer I must admit I'm quite surprised at the results I've got very sharp very very fine grain can't even see it um high resolution couldn't quite get there because i can't print that big but uh, you know there's a lot of films out there for us to play with and try out i've got my favorite films you guys have got your favorite films but for still life stuff indoors and whatever i might give this another dabble uh also going to try the spurred film as well and see how i get on because i certainly like the sharpness the tonality as well with those times that I developed in Spur. So uh, let us know guys if any of you have used this film, if you do, or the Spur, what do you use it for? What do you develop it in? Um, let us know, I'm sure myself and others will be interested to know. I hope you enjoyed this video, playing around, I hope it's given you some ideas and inspiration if anything else. I'll catch you next time.